This is Thoughts Become Things. With each episode, we'll help you reach the highest creative potential that God has for you. With your host, a teacher, life coach, a dream coach, and motivational speaker, Jeremy Lopez. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another podcast of Thoughts Become Things. I'm Jeremy Lopez, and hope everyone had a great week so far. I know my week has been really good, and I'm excited to be with you guys today. I'll tell you, the weather has just been amazing and beautiful this week. It's just been awesome. So I'm hoping wherever you live in the world that the weather is treating you kind today as well. And I'm really thankful that we have a podcast that reaches around the globe, because so many people need to understand the power of the mind, and we need to be able to get to this place where we understand... Our power that's God-given to understand exactly how we can change our lives and how we can think and then act on those thoughts and birth forth something beautiful, something miraculous. You know, when people talk to me, um, you know, being sort of from the charismatic, spiritual background, people tend to talk to me and say, I'm looking for God's miracles. I'm looking, you know, to for God to perform miracles. And I always say that's dynamic and great and, hey, who's not, right? On the other hand, though, I also would say this, that what if we came to the realization that we are a miracle and that we produce miracles as well from God, understanding that we are, as a people, as an entity, as a, a authentic person, I'm a miracle within myself. And that means that I'm created out of the Creator to create. And because of that, I can create what I call miracles every day. Creative miracles to me are not just watching a leg grow out, you know, or praying for somebody and they automatically get healed. It means the fact that I am a creative being that has this creative powers in, in me to perform the creative miracles that need to be. And creative miracles are not always just the, you know, those things with on a human being, but those things that are extended out of a human being are creative miracles. Things of, of, of birthing forth maybe, uh, you know, a law firm, birthing forth maybe being, a, you know, a realtor in my life, or, you know, coming from a place where, the, you know, you're the property manager of a, of a, company or whatever the case may be, those are creative miracles. You literally were birthing forth your creativity and you birth forth a miracle by doing that, by being that. And by having other people to be a part of that. So your creative miracles actually come into all these different things of realizing that you are creating miracles every single day of your life. And then we get down to the point of the miracle being really just loving people. You know, the miracle of loving people. The miracle of having a grace for people. I mean, miracles come and creative miracles come in all different shape, form, or fashions. And the beautiful thing about life is every moment of every day we have that power to choose. And we have the power to create miracles at any given moment. Moment that we choose because God's always wanting to birth forth in us this amazing ability to begin to say, you know what, you have what it takes. If you have faith to move a mountain, and if you say to this mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in your heart, you know what, it's going to be that to you. And that's really where we have to begin to understand that God has really, really called us to be that person and to really understand what we're what we're capable of doing in our lives. And so I wanted to sort of bring that to the forefront today before I sort of start my message because I sort of wanted to teach just for and just really share today on my brand new book for September. Because my brand new book is called Becoming the You That You Want to Be. And I want you to think about that. Becoming the you that you want to be. I could not begin to tell you how many people in life coaching I've spoken with that actually have this notion that they're not the right person. You know, um, not the fact that they're saying, hey, I'm not in the right body, you know. Uh, my, my spirit was put into another body when I was born. No. The point I'm making is they feel like they're not the right person to perform a task. They feel like they're not the right person to to answer a question. They feel like they're not the right person to, you know, uh, to own something. They're not the right person because maybe I feel like I'm stuck in, a, in you know, because of my color or, you know, where I was born or anything. And, and the truth is we're all fighting so hard to become something, but the problem with that is we're trying to become something we don't even know we're trying to become. We just want to know, we know that we're trying to become something different than what we are now. And the, one of the things I've come to the conclusion on is, first of all, learning to respect the now moment of where you are and understanding the idea of who I am right now actually was created uh, for me to be where I am. In other words, somehow in my life, whether it's a bad person, a good person, a godly person, or whatever, you have to sort of take the positive out of, or put the positivity into the situation to realize, you know, what I am right now, I created that to be. 
you know, and whether once again, if you create a disaster or you created a masterpiece that's beautiful and spectacular and, you know, giving God glory, you still need to realize that whatever the case may be, you created that. And so I would say, first of all, remember that who you are at this present moment is a beautiful person. And acknowledging that you are needing to respect who you are right now and then learning and understanding who you need to become is beautiful. But I always tell people that, you know, you can't live in the future of wanting to be something that you really don't know what you're what you're meant to be. And you can't live in the now moment and always live in the future and not really appreciate where you are right now in this life. And once again, whether you produce something good or bad, the key thing is you've got to give yourself enough credit to say, you know what, hey, I don't need to hit myself too hard over the head and be so down on myself because, because of all the disaster maybe I've created. But you know what I do need to do is at least acknowledge the fact that I have power that I created, period. And then when that happens, something begins to kick in. Something with inside of us begins to kick in to say, let that that, let that unction, let that notion of of happiness and that, that push and that drive to say, hey, at least I created something. Let that become a positive for you. And then you can turn your life around to say, but now that I know that, now that I've created a, a disaster or now that I've created this good thing or whatever, I can always change it around to create something beautiful of what I really need in this season that I want. That I really want to be able to, to create and, and, and do. So let everything be uh, um, let everything become a power for you. Let everything become a, a, a netification thing for you. To exhort yourself in where you are now. Because my book, when it talks about becoming the you that you want to be, it really brings forth a power in you to, first of all, respect and honor who you are now, love the person you are now, and then get an idea of what that person has done. You know, what have you done that's actually changed people's lives? What have you done that really touched lives? And you might say, well, it was my silly laughter. People, you know, people uh, always laugh at me at how I laugh or people you know laugh at me because I tell silly jokes or you know um, I'm always loving to just take people pick people up on the side of the road and just take them maybe to get food I mean whatever the case may be for you you have to begin to acknowledge that you know you can't live in the future forever you've got to begin to first of all acknowledge where you are now because if you don't know your foundation of who you are in this now moment you'll never become anything but you know better because you've got to first of all have a base a foundation of who you are now and 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 understand what got you where you are now and the beauty, the beautiful thing about life is realizing that I am creative. I do create good, bad, and ugly. And also need to understand that if I'm always projecting myself in the future of what's going to happen to me or what's, or, where I'm, or who I'm becoming or where I'm going to be, then I'm, then every moment of my life I will rob because I'm not used to living in the now moment. And not living in the now moment hurts me. And that's the thing you have to understand is not living in the now moment hurts you. It hurts you by not understanding the reality of what is unfolding to you right now. That's what's beautiful. Because everything's going to be subject to change and we, nobody knows what the future holds and all we can do is begin to respect and let the unfolding of the now moment say I love where I am right now maybe I love who I am I love who I'm loving right now I'm, you know, or I love the job I have now or or whatever it is the case may be is living in that I'm now reality and respecting that now moment because once again everything's going to change in the future anyway and even no matter how much you project it and, and, and talk about it the key thing is it's still going to manifest to you similar to what you're looking for in your vision or your dream or your expectation, but it's always going to turn out differently because you're thinking from where you are right now. And your mind is always going to change at every any given moment because it always will. And so that's the thing that I always let people know is be where you are now. Love who you are now. Love what you're loving right now. Be happy and content. The Bible talks about being content in all things. Be content where you are right now and find the beauty in the now moment of who you're with or where you're going or what you're doing or whatever. Because the beauty, if not, you'll miss the beauty. And then tomorrow you will come and you'll say, man, you know what? I never realized how much I robbed my life of enjoying the now moment because you're always throwing something into the future, right? So within my book, Becoming the You That You Want to Be, I help you navigate through a foundation of this point of where are you right now? And where do you want to be? Where do you, you know, where where is it that you are seeing your life producing now and evolving? And what do you see the evolving, you know, coming into? One of the chapters in my book that we're going to sort of share for a moment that might help many of you is in as a chapter that's called Know Thyself: The Power of Self Awareness. And this book is a pretty thick book, and I really enjoyed writing it because when it deals with the power of, of now and my awareness, here's one thing I wrote within that chapter. It says the realization is both the responsibility to make the choices that I want to live my best life, and an exciting prospect that means that I have the power to create the life that I want to have just by becoming more aware 
And I love this part, folks. Becoming more aware of every opportunity I have to choose and to choose differently. The key thing for many of us is we don't pay attention to the fact that there's an opportunity for you to choose. The, the beautiful thing about life, the beauty is in the, fi- the fact that I have a choice. You know, the Bible talks about life and death and the power of the tongue. You know, choose life. And, you know, the, the, uh, and it talks about, you know, uh, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So there's a beautiful opportunity that's called choice. And I've been given and granted the, the power to choose, just like you have. And when you begin to dive into that understanding, that, hey, you know what? I have an opportunity every moment of every day to decide what it is that I want to be. If you, you know, When we say to ourselves, you know, hey, I'm going through a hard time in my life. You know what? We have compassion on people, right? But you have to determine in your heart after a week or two or two days or whatever the time that you have allotted yourself to, let's say, mourn or grieve or go through a situation, then the opportunity will knock on your door to say, do you want to continue this or do you want the opportunity to choose something different, to maybe choose joy now. And so we do have that, that option. We have the power to cast down vain imagination of things that we think in our mind that we realize are doing us harm. You know, anything that's contrary to your joy and happiness and, and your, you know, and the surroundings that you once loved, you know, when happiness, you know, is there, live it, breathe it, you know, drink it, manifest it, and begin to, to really expand on that in your life. But you have to understand also, there's also sadness, and sadness will knock on our door, and sometimes during the fact that maybe if we love somebody, if they've passed on, you know what? Sadness is going to be present because we loved. And it's okay to mourn during a situation of loss or whatever. However, through that, you also have to begin to notice that in a couple of days or a couple of weeks or whenever you feel in your heart that it's time for you to sort of, to quote unquote, change, listen to the door of, uh, you know, of opportunity because it's going to knock on upon you and it's going to say, do you want that? Do you want the same thing or do you want to make a choice to choose to be happy today? And so happiness really is a choice. We can choose that and we can choose to cast down vain imagination, which basically is our unlimited imaginations and thoughts that are making us feel, you know, rejected or hurt or abandoned or, you know, not worthy enough or not trusting enough. We have that opportunity to begin to face that and say, do I really want to think about that? Because the key thing is, you have to know, do you want joy in your life? Do you want happiness in your life? Because if you do, you can force yourself to turn around and say, you know what? Hey, I'm tired of feeling this way today. I'm going to choose joy. I'm going to, and here's what you do. You think about the positive. You choose to think about the good things of, let's say, a situation of job or work or family or relationship, whatever. You choose to think about the good things that that presented to you and brought to you. And when you dwell on those, then you starve the negative. And when you starve the negative thoughts and the vain imaginations, the Bible says cast down vain imaginations. And it says, and it goes on to say anything contrary to the mind of Christ. And what that means is because the mind of Christ is full of joy. You know, the Bible says the kingdom of God is, what the kingdom of God is, is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And so anything that is contrary to peace and joy and, and these things, then you know what? You don't want that. So cast it down in the sense of shifting your mind. Change your mind to the happy thoughts that you knew once brought you some joy. And guess what? Your mind will start feeding it more joy and it'll expand in you. And when you deal with the fact of a choice, you have to look at this and realize, you know what? I need to be able to notice exactly where I am now. And then if I I really understand and respect and love where I am now in my life and learn to to be content in that, then the future will automatically begin to uh, uh, unfold for you guys. You know, as some people say, if I don't have this done and that done, then I'll never progress. Here's the problem. Here, here's the problem with that, with that reasoning. You will progress, period. Unless you're dead, you know, six feet underground, you're going to progress. In other words, you're going to you're going to go forward. Now, progressing into what will be your choice? I can progress into sadness. I can progress into a better job. I can progress in a joy. I can progress and stuff. But progress does not always mean something in the sense of going to a happier place. It means I'm progressing, you know, within the thing that I'm living in now. So whatever you're living in now, if you're living in contentment, you're going to progress into more contentment. If you're if you're if you're living in joy and choose joy today, you're going to progress into joy. If you're choosing, you know, the sadness and the bad things of life and how life has treated you bad, then life will progress to give you more bad days and bad life. The thing that we have to about our lives is this. It scares us to think that we have the power of our lives to choose. It scares us because the truth is we'd rather have our lives on autopilot to where God just runs the show and God runs everything. But the beautiful thing about the kingdom of God is God gives us the power to say, choose you this day whom you will serve. 
The power of life and death is in your tongue. I mean, it, you know, he gives us he gives us options and choices, not basically do it or die, but he gives us choices to say this is a great opportunity for you to, to desire what it is you want in your life today. And if your mind is renewed by the kingdom of God and having the mind of Christ, then you automatically always sort of progress into something beautiful, healthy, um, you know, unfolding to where other people can be involved, to where it's serving other people, not just yourself. I mean, that's really our choice, and and we have to begin to realize that. And so the truth is, when, we, when it boils down to it, if you don't like your life, change it. If you're not happy, choose joy today. It really is that easy. And one of the things you have to also remember is this, and this is one thing I sort of discussed a little bit in the book, is you know, when you look at your life now and feel like like everything's going crazy with you and, and, it's a, and you take it so seriously, you're going to look back a year from now and you'll find yourself laughing at that time in your life. You'll say, man, I feel like I didn't have anything in the moment. How silly was I when tomorrow something came about? Well, the next day, this popped into my world. The truth is, we have to begin to realize that your feelings do lie. <laughs> they really do lie. And that feeling of feeling like, my world is crumbling, guess what? It's a feeling. Unless you're truly being crumbled or, or smashed into a bulldozer, then you know what? Your life is not really crumbling. It's the feeling that everything's crumbling because maybe you see in the natural things that look like they're falling apart. But folks, let me tell you something. We saw on 9-11 uh, that the Twin Towers fell within, within a certain length of time. Can you imagine how long it took them to build those Twin Towers? How many thousands of people went in those things probably weekly or daily? And yet within, within no time at all, within a, within a day, they crumbled. They came t- you know, towering down. And what's really sad about that is realizing that if you look at your life today and you think to yourself, what all have I built? What all, have I, all, all everything I've built can crumble within seconds. But the good thing about that is, is even though it crumbles, it can be rebuilt. It can change for something to remember. When I think of 9-11, I think of the horrible thing that happened with the, the attack on the, on the Twin Towers. I think the devastation of people that burned and, and was crushed and was killed that day, it breaks my heart. It literally breaks my heart. But we can also look at this and say, you know what, through, let's say, an aunt's death who, or an uncle's death or a mom and dad's death through that, even though we hated it, we realized that, you know what, we can turn this around to be memorial. We can turn this around to realize that, you know what, let this be a sign of how, let's say, for example, how freedom we have. Well, let's let it be an example of realizing that we can, you know, hey, do something to be more aware of the fact that we don't allow, let's say, terrorists in. You know, in other words, change it around to something that you know is good or positive that you can reconstruct or rebuild. And when you do that, you realize, wow, you know what? I can turn things around as well of how I want to see it or view it because you can. And becoming the you that you want to be, you have to begin to remember this. One of the things I put on the put within the book. Is and some of the chapter titles really, I believe, will help each one of you out because I have come to the conclusion that there's a lot of things in our lives that we have to begin to really examine in the foundation that we're building. Because the truth is, folks, your your life might feel like it's crumbling today, but tomorrow you can just rebuild again. Tomorrow something else might come your way that was better than what crumbled in your life. You can't always look and say my life is over because this relationship fell apart. Your life is not over. It's not. Because it can, you know, sometimes the Lord Bible says the Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away. Sometimes God will take from you to give you something better. But if you're, but if you're too busy thinking that was the absolute best you can get, then you know what? It's going to be hard for you to be a receiver of something better than what you had before from God, unless you yield and submit and realize, you know what? I, I don't. My life is not crumbling. It's just shifting. And I'm going to pray it's shifting into something a little bit better. So becoming the you that you want to be needs to have all these realities. You need to realize that change is a choice. That realize that, you know what, you've got to learn to know who you are. Know what the things that you really feel you, you, you want to enjoy. Things that make you happy, but also things that are, that are healthy for you. It's not just about things that make you happy. It's about in that happiness, is it healthy for you? Is it longevity? Does it, does it produce joy that's unspeakable? Does it produce do something that, that no matter what happens your way, you don't go by what you see or feel because that joy is so established in you that it just sort of carries you over the hard times and the, the trials and tribulations? Yes. If that's you, then guess what? You're on the road to recovery, but you're also on the road to becoming a better you, a better version of who you want. Acknowledge, and here's the key thing I always tell people. There's something that's called acknowledgement. And if I could if I could preach and drink and sleep on the word acknowledgement, I will. Because you have to learn to acknowledge. Acknowledge the pain and pull something from it. Acknowledge where you are in your life and pull something from it. Acknowledge what's working for you 
and pull something from it. Acknowledge what is not working for you. Acknowledge at this present moment what is bringing you that joy. What's happening to you right now. Acknowledge being fully awakened and, and come to a place of awareness is one of the best things that we can ever do for our lives because that's the beginning stage of seeing something new unfold that we can entertain and run into. And understand, understanding also that you know when you get sort of hooked up into, into the God life, you know, you can't help but prosper. You can't help but see life begin to change for you. So I really wanted to sort of share this, these, these things with you because I want you to begin to understand exactly your foundation and understanding that, you know what, you, we are hopefully all on a road to recovery to become the better version of who we are, who we need to be. And it doesn't mean you're bad now and you're becoming good. It means, you know what, what you're doing right now is exactly maybe where God wants you to be. And maybe you think your life is great and grandeur and there's nothing that can change it. However, God says, you know what? No eye has seen, no ear has heard, nor has it entered the heart of man the things I prepared for you. So when you think your life is amazing, rest in the amazing part of that joy, but always have an expectation that to God, it's just good of what you consider great. And God wants to make it greater or great to where you're going to look and say, man, this is beyond fabulous. This is beyond anything I've ever asked for in my life. I thought what I had was good before, man. Now I really got it really good. Because that's what God wants to do. And so within this book, let me take you on a journey to help you to really understand how to break down your life, look at it, examine it, what to change, what not to change, you know, um, what needs to stay the same, uh, learning to love where you are, Bring, bring, bringing forth that awareness of really knowing who you are right now. If you're thinking, for example, I want to become a better person, and if you're not aware of who you are now and what's going on in your life, you can't become a better person. You know why? Because you have no foundation. you got to start somewhere. And the first step to start somewhere is acknowledgement. Who I am. Where am I right now? What am I doing? What makes me happy? What brings me joy? You know, Do I really understand the power of of the gratitude that God created me in His image and likeness, and I'm actually happy with that. You know, sure, can I gain a, gain a few pounds, lose, 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 a few pa- lose a few pounds? Sure, you can. But it doesn't mean that you're not great where you are right now. Because God looks at you and says, you know, and when we look in Genesis, and we see where God created something on the first day, second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day, sixth day. When God created man, He says, it's very good. And everything else, he just said it was good because we are very good to God's in God's eyes because we're made in His image and likeness. And because of that, you've got to begin to acknowledge where you are now is a good place to be. And when you become aware of that fact, you can see the uh, the sort of evolving, the unfolding of what's happening, and then you'll have an idea of where you're going. But there is a better version of you locked inside of you, and it's not going to happen magically overnight. It's going to happen by the unfolding of the Holy Spirit, of God showing you things. But it's also going to help you it's going to also going to help you when you submit to, to the Lord in the sense of allowing yourself to unfold to yourself you know the power to begin to see yourself and recognize the fact that you know what there's beauty right now I'm content where I am right now I'm loving my life right now that's the foundation in which God says good that's the attitude I want you to have now we can begin a better version or pull out the better version of who you are because the, the cool thing about the kingdom of God is being content in all things the Bible says you know stand so here's the thing. He says, stand. And when you've done all, stand. So what it's saying is, you start off on your, on your two feet standing. You start off in gratitude. If you want more gratitude, start off in gratitude. Start off on your two feet of being grateful and thankful where you are now. Start off on your two feet loving right now to where that gives a seed to God to work with to say, you give me love and I'll produce more of that within inside of you, coming to you and through you in the future. You produce grace, that's your seed, and I'll give you more grace to come in you or out of you. You produce this and I'll begin to cause the seed that you're moving into right now by understanding to be content in where you are now and I'll take that seed of contentment and I'll begin to produce it more for you and awaken more of the better version of who you are. There's a great person inside of you and you're great right now but there's a greater person inside of you that really needs to come to the surface. But in order for that person to come to the surface you've got to begin to build a foundation of planting seeds now of the joy, the gratitude, the thankfulness. You know, uh, want, you know, thanking God where you are right now. Thanking God who you are right now. Thanking God of every little thing right now. You might say, well my job is not the best in the world. Give gratitude for what you have right now. Give gratitude for, the, for maybe for the few dollars you do have in your bank account. 
account now. The idea is in your now moment, you've got to build a foundation and, and bring seeds to God to where He can work with those seeds. And when you do, guess what? You'll see a better version of you come out. And in five years from now, you'll look back and you'll say, I don't even know the person I was five years ago. But yet you remember, you will look back and remember though, the gratitude you had. And so the good things of those seeds you planted, you'll remember that because that's what got you where you are right now. So I want to encourage every one of you right now, go to the website, identitynetwork.net. And when you do, in the search engine, just put in becoming the you that you want to be. Becoming the you that you want to be. You can actually just put in becoming the you. All right, becoming the you. The moment you put that in, press the search button. When you do, it'll pull it up. You can download it right then and there within minutes or seconds, or you can order the paperback. If you order the paperback, I'll be gladly, gladly to autograph it for you. And you can just put that in the notes section when you order the book and say, please have Jeremy autograph it. I'll be more than happy to autograph it for you. But I want each one of you to get this book, Becoming the You That You Want to Be. It will it will bring laughter. It will bring tears to you, but it will open your eyes to show you that there's such a dynamic future ahead of you and you need to know exactly who you are now and where you're headed. If you don't know who you are now, you won't know who you're becoming. So get the book today. God bless you. Thank you so much for tuning into this podcast. And as always, I want to close out by, as always, saying, if you don't like your life today, change it. Create a beautiful atmosphere. Create a better life for yourself today. Because today won't last forever. It's only 24 hours. And the moment today is gone, it's gone. But I would say today, take the opportunity today. Choose what you want and it shall be given back to you. God bless. This has been the Thoughts Become Things podcast with Jeremy Lopez, helping you reach your highest creative potential that God has for you. For more episodes, products, and information on Jeremy, visit www.identitynetwork.net.